The next presenter is uh, Dr. Edward Schaefer. And uh, Dr. Schaefer is also at John Hopkins, where he's associate professor of urology, oncology, and pathology. And he's a co-director of the Prostate Cancer Multidisciplinary Clinic. Uh, as a, uh, and, and Dr. Dr. Schaefer has spent some time, and, and I know Dr. Schaefer and Dr. Carter work together, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> but he's uh, completed a study uh, about active surveillance in African Americans. And there have been some very interesting findings uh, that, that emanated from the study. So we're anxious to learn what those findings are. So now I welcome Dr. Edward Schaefer. Well, I'd like to thank Mr. Farrington for inviting me to come down here today. And um, the, the purpose of this talk is to really build on what Dr. Carter um, just spoke with you about and um, explore more special considerations that African American men uh, may want to have when they're considering active surveillance. Now, as, as uh, Bal just uh, emphasized, there's uh, been a tremendously increased emphasis on active surveillance for men with very low risk prostate cancer. And here's a table from a recent review that in, in effect summarizes that the outcomes for most men who choose active surveillance are really exceptional. And so again, the take home message of Dr. Carter's talk uh, was in, that in well-selected men, active surveillance is a very good option. Now, the next question uh, is um, that we, we wanted to answer was, uh, how do African American men do in active surveillance? As uh, we just heard, most large uh, active surveillance cohorts contain very few African American men. Hopkins has about 7%. The other large cohorts, uh, Toronto, San Francisco, all contain few African American men. And the question was, um, do African American men who are considering active surveillance need special consideration? And so I know that you've heard about this in years past at this conference, um, and um, it's certainly uh, on all of our minds, but African Americans have worse prostate cancer outcomes than do Caucasians. And here's some statistics from the American Cancer Society, which really illustrate this significant discrepancy in outcomes. African Americans are about twice as likely to be diagnosed with prostate cancer, and more importantly, they're about twice as likely to be diagnosed with metastatic prostate cancer and die from it. So this is a serious problem, and a different, the disease has a different biology in African Americans. And I know that you've heard from Isaac Powell in the past, and he's very nicely shown that in African Americans, uh, he postulates that there's probably a faster cancer growth over time. And Dr. Mall and Dr. McLeod, who are, are uh, have also demonstrated that at the time of diagnosis, African Americans have higher PSA values. In some, prostate cancers in African American men are more aggressive and I certainly think are biologically distinct. Now, what do we know about African American men in active surveillance cohorts? Um, there's been three good studies that have really kind of acted to uh, spur our, our further exploration of this concept. So the University of Pennsylvania looked at uh, about 50 men, and these were African-American men who had criteria that Dr. Carter talked about. These were men who had very low risk cancer, and they had surgery right away. And what they looked, and what they showed, uh, this is in this left panel, was that there was no difference at the time of surgery when compared to, to Caucasian men in terms of how much cancer they had and how aggressive it was. Contrast that with this, this Miami and Duke studies. These were, um, these were observations made from their actual active surveillance groups. And what they showed was that if you were African American, you had a much higher likelihood, and that's just this HR or hazard ratio, much higher likelihood of having progression of your symptoms of your disease in active surveillance. Now, what are the limitations of these studies? These are very provocative. One, of course, is that they had very small numbers. Okay, these are 50 men, 25 men. And the other thing is that they didn't include something that Dr. Carter de-emphasized, but really he brought to the forefront. And that is that PSA density 
is one of the most important predictors for how a patient would do uh, in active surveillance. And PSA density was not part of these studies. And that is part of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network's criteria for man to consider active surveillance. So these studies were clearly uh, very thought-provoking for us, and so our research team, which includes Dr. Carter, um, really began to explore this. And so in our mind, the paradox was as follows. African Americans have more aggressive disease, they have a faster growing cancers, and overall have worse outcomes. Yet we offer active surveillance to all men with low-grade, low-stage tumors. Are there disparities in outcomes for African Americans with low-risk prostate cancer? Do we need to have special criteria for them? And we thought we sought to answer this with three uh, main questions. And the first way that we looked at this was to look at African American men with very low risk prostate cancer who underwent immediate treatment, similar to this Penn study I told you about, um, and we compared their outcomes to Caucasian men. And the difference was that we didn't look at 50 men, we looked at 1,700 plus men who, ha who we, were, we treated at Johns Hopkins. And this included over 250 African American men. And the measures that we looked at were simple. We looked at the grade of the cancer at surgery. So these were men who came in and on paper they had very minimally aggressive cancers. Um, and we looked after surgery how aggressive was the cancer, how extensive was the cancer, and then we used a metric for their overall curability. And here's a very complicated table that summarizes some of our findings. And what I'm going to do for you is just highlight the points we just talked about. So if you look at the grade of the cancer, these are all men that came in with this low-grade cancer, Gleason 6, and we looked at how often that grade changed and got to a more aggressive number. And it went up significantly. The extent of the tumor was also much more. And our metric for curability, which is a complicated algorithm that shows how curable their disease was at the time of surgery, was much higher in African Americans compared to Caucasians. Here's another table that summarizes the results. So this, again, what was the likelihood of having non-organ confined disease? This is the cancer pushing outside of the capsule of the prostate. It was twice as high in African Americans, which are the gold bar. The likelihood of having your grade of your cancer change was also much higher. The likelihood that cancer was left behind at surgery was higher. And this Capra S3 notion is a metric for curability. And so on average, African American men had more aggressive features and were less likely to be cured when they had their uh, treatment. So what you can do is you can take all these factors and you can put them into a complex algorithm and you can do multivariable logistic regression. And what you can do is you can see uh, whether or not African American race was associated with poor outcomes. And what we found was that this, in fact, was the case, and African American men were about three and a half fold more likely to have adverse pathology. This is more extensive cancer, and they're about two and a half more times more likely to have a higher grade or more aggressive cancer in this particular study. And so, in summary, uh, African Americans with very low risk prostate cancer had poorer prostate cancer specific outcomes. They had more upgrading and more upstaging. And we believe that the current low risk stratification system was missing significant cancers in these men. And so we concluded that African Americans with very low risk cancer are at higher risk and certainly should be in at least consulted as such. Now this prompted our second question. And that was the exciting part. What was the basis for this disparity in outcomes with very low risk cancer? Was this a biologic phenomenon? Was there something about the cancers? Were they growing faster? Um, or was this simply an anatomic phenomenon? Did we just miss the cancers on the biopsy? And so to explore this uh, question, we utilized one of our tremendous resources at Johns Hopkins, which is uh, Dr. Jonathan Epstein. And he is really the world's premier prostate cancer pathologist. He looks at all the tissues under the microscope. And we asked him to look at uh, these cases I just described to you. And so what we did was we again took the same cases I just told you about. These are men who had surgery and we looked at their prostates under the microscope. 
And what we, what, we just, what we did was we looked for where the largest cancer was and where the highest grade cancer was. And we asked him to just chart it out. It's just a map, a template. And we looked at 100 cases of Caucasians and 100 cases of African Americans. And this is a picture of what Dr. Epstein looks at every day, a couple hundred times a day. These are, this is a, a prostate that was removed from a man. And just for some orientation, um, at the bottom of the screen would be the rectum. So when men go to see their doctor, they often have a rectal exam. The reason that they do is because you can feel the prostate on the rectal exam. And the bottom half of the slide, you can see it's in, there's four sections. The bottom half of the slide is the area of the prostate closest to the rectum. This is where we traditionally think most prostate cancers occur. And it's an area where we can easily access the prostate with the biopsy. Now, right at the cross hatch in the middle would be the urethra, and that's the tube that men urinate through when they go to the bathroom. And then the area above that, the two upper boxes, is what we call the anterior part of the prostate. It's the farthest away from the rectum. So what Dr. Epstein did was looked at 100 cases. And so this is about 50 or 60 slides for each case. And he went through, and when a pathologist looks at a prostate specimen, what they do is they actually mark out, as you can see with these little dots, where they see the cancer. And here's a representative slide of a case from a Caucasian man. The tumor is very low in the prostate, right along the edge. And what was striking to us, and was really a remarkable finding, was that on average, African American men had many more tumors that were above the urethra in this anterior part of the prostate. And you can see this dotted out here with this very dramatic example. And so here's a summary of our findings. And so when looking at 100, just under 100 cases for Caucasians versus African Americans, the tumors were bigger. The tumors were higher grade. I just told you we, we, found, we knew that before. Um, and remarkably, as I just illustrated with that actual specimen, the tumors were in different locations. So over 50% of the time in African-American men who, when we originally saw them in the clinic, we thought they had very minimal disease, actually had more aggressive disease. It was hiding from our view in this anterior portion of the prostate. And these little red bars would just be an example of what we would typically, how a biopsy needle would typically sample the prostate. So we would aim the biopsy needles and they do a very good job sampling this posterior part of the prostate close to the rectum. But it's much harder to actually sample these areas that are farther away from the rectum. And so we began to think that this may be why we are seeing this very interesting finding. Now, as Dr. Carter illustrated, men who have Gleason 6 prostate cancer do very well in active surveillance and are unlikely to die from their disease. Men who have higher grade cancers, Gleason 7 or higher, have a little bit riskier disease, and the discussion process with their physicians should be more detailed. And so what we did in our study was actually look to see where, where, what was the distribution of these higher grade tumors in Caucasians versus African American men. And what was really striking to us was that in contrast to Caucasians who, if they did have more aggressive disease, it was always in this posterior area shown by this 90 percent. African Americans, about 60 percent of the time, had their most aggressive tumor far away from the urethra in an area that's harder to biopsy. So overall, African Americans had their biggest tumors about 50% of the time far away from the urethra. But if you, if you just say, well, I'll, I'm interested only in the really aggressive tumors, well, they're even, they're even more pushed towards the top. So anatomic locations uh, account for some of these missed cancers among men with very low risk cancer who underwent immediate surgery, they're more likely to have significant high grade tumors in this anterior portion of the prostate. And so uh, we believe that African American men considering surveillance may need better state, a better staging strategy to rule out this occult high grade cancer. This may mean we develop alternative biopsy strategies. This may mean that we utilize MRI imaging, as Dr. Carr alluded to, we do now in our program, um, to better see these tumors, which you, if they're big enough, you can see them on MRI. Now, the last, the last 
question we asked, because the first two questions we asked were based on men who came to us, we thought they had low risk cancer, and they had surgery right away. So we actually went back to our, our database our, of our active surveillance patients, and we actually said, how do men who are African American who are actually in our active surveillance database fare. How do they do? And so again, this was the same criteria outlined by Dr. Epstein, our pathologist. And we have 75 men in our cohort, and if you use the very strict criteria, there's just under 50 men who had very low risk cancer that we followed over time in our active surveillance group. And we looked at progression, or as Dr. Carter called it, reclassification, either by grade meaning the cancer becomes more aggressive when we follow patients over time, or by increased size of their tumor. And so overall, these, are, these, 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 these fancy numbers basically <coughs> suggest that African Americans in our active surveillance cohort are at increased risk for having progression of their disease. So is it progression by grade or volume? So we, we broke things down, and this is just an overall how people do. So the red bar is African Americans, and if you look over time, they fall out of the study more often. Now, if you look at progression by volume, the bar, the red bar and the blue bar, although they look a little different on the, on the, on the uh, image, there's no difference, okay? So it does not appear as though African Americans have, at least for Gleason 6 cancer, more disease over time. The striking difference is that over time, African Americans in our active surveillance cohort are found to have more high-grade cancer. Okay? And so the difference between Caucasians shown in the blue bar versus African Americans in the red bar is very different. And this may be because of just, it's not necessarily because they develop a higher grade cancer over time, but what we think it is is that these tumors may be just hiding from us and are more difficult to sample. So summary number three, among men with very low risk prostate cancer who've been prospectively enrolled in our active surveillance program at Hopkins are at a higher risk of progression. And if the goal of active surveillance is to monitor men without high-grade disease, then we need race-specific selection criteria or alternative strategies to stage African-American men with prostate cancer. So in conclusion, um, African-American men with NCCN, very low-risk cancer, experience significantly different oncologic outcomes. Um, they, they have adverse pathology if they undergo immediate surgery. Um, they have a uh, higher risk for upgrading on serial biopsies. And our detailed pathologic study provides some insight into why this is. They have uh, higher grade cancers in locations that are more difficult to biopsy with their traditional approach. And so we think the development of novel imaging or biopsy strategies may be helpful in these cases. And so where are we going with this? Well, I think you've learned at this conference in years past that there are definitely biological differences in African-American tumors. We also think now that there are anatomic differences, and clearly these two things come together and may account for, for some of the disparities that we've seen. And so I'd just like to acknowledge my research support and our research team, Dr. Carter, uh, Ashley Ross, and Deb Sundi is actually a young urologist in training who did uh, a large burden of all of this work.